Once the lie was exposed, regardless of the gossip that might ensue, Aiden's relationship with Oliver would be affected. In a word, going to see Oliver's teacher would only bring trouble. Oh, and where is he now? Aiden asked, trying to stay nonchalant. He's in the school, of course. In the school that is in Indianapolis? Aiden slightly relaxed his breathing. I'm ashamed to say that I'm much too busy at the moment to afford a visit. Oliver blinked his eyes. Then, as if he had an idea, he said, Then I'll ask him to come to the Bayside District. Aiden's face became stiff, and he coughed dryly. How will you do that? Indianapolis is so far away. I know that he's been in poor health, so how could he withstand such a long journey? If something goes wrong on the way, you'll be responsible for it. Triggering deception ability. Triggering mastery level charm to improve target sense of trust. Oliver only felt that Aiden's words were like golden rules, commandments that could not be questioned. Hearing Aiden's objection, he turned pale. Pretend I never said that. That's right. Aiden patted Oliver on the shoulder and said with kindness, There's no need to bother our teacher if we can help it. And don't talk to him about me in the future. Do you understand? Oliver nodded profusely. Aiden nodded as well, satisfied, and left Kay's villa. Not long after Aiden left, a cold wind blew, and Oliver suddenly shook all over. He scratched his head suspiciously and murmured, Isn't Indianapolis only two hours away by train? And I never heard that our teacher was in bad health. Oliver shook his head and said, Regardless, I'd better go play with Dora before she finds me. Ah, what do I do? That night, Aiden and his family went to dinner and then returned to the midnight snack corner. Looking at the buildings and decorations around the snack street, Aiden was very proud of his hometown. Hood still set up his beef stand every night and sold his meats to the passersby. According to Clara, he had gotten to know a young widow, and they were going to get married soon. At their shop, old Joe Brown and Miss Brown still quarreled all day. Miss Brown's sharp and mean voice ringing out from time to time from the shop front. Miss Holbred of the tailor's shop was not doing very well this year. To drum up more business, she opened a poker table in the shop, calling in friends to play poker there. She made so much money that the shop was finally transformed into a poker club. Now it seemed that the business in the store was very good. Aiden's heart was filled with emotion. After all, this was the place where he grew up, leaving many good memories and he also met his two best friends on this street. Nerd, what were you thinking? Not telling us you were in town. With a heavy slap on his shoulder, Aiden turned his head to find Zack and Jacob smiling at him. The three, at one time in their lives, had been practically inseparable. Among them, Jacob was the tallest, Zack was short and chubby, and Aiden liked reading books better than talking to other people. Therefore, the nicknames they gave to each other the three were Giraffe, Tubbs, and Bookworm. Giraffe, Tubbs, how much barbecue are we going to eat tonight? Aiden grinned ear to ear, and the others did the same. The night before Aiden had left the Bayside District, they all had gone out to eat at a barbecue restaurant. Aiden had out-eaten them both, until the other two were practically in a food coma. Finally, Aiden had called a car to send them home. Thinking of this, they were embarrassed. No, no more. Today we're going to get mini corn dogs. With a wave of his hand, Zack turned into an alley. At the end of the alley, a sign stood above a small shop. The old signboard, blown by the wind, was crumbling. However, half of the characters on it weren't lit. You could only read the words Lynn, Family, and Dogs on it. It looked even less promising than the earliest iteration of the Midnight Snack Corner. If the look was not outstanding, as Aiden had learned, business would never get better. Sure enough, once you entered the store, the place looked even more miserable than you think. Except for the three of them, the whole store was empty. Jerry, you in here? Zack shouted in the direction of the kitchen. Then he saw a girl in an apron who emerged from the kitchen, wiping her hands. The girl was about the same age as the three of them. She was slim and quiet. She looked like a gentle person. When she saw Zack, she immediately said with a smile, Oh, Zack, you're taking care of our business again, hmm? Hey, hey. Zack was beat red. He felt embarrassed and scratched his head. This time, I brought my friends. Come on, serve us up. Zack did not know why, but he hesitated and did not dare to look directly at the girl. After death, Aiden and Jacob looked at each other with a knowing smile. Zack wasn't here for corn dogs, Not at all. He clearly had a big crush on this girl, who he had called Cherry. Okay, coming right up. 
Sherry answered and went back to the kitchen. Then, a tall and thin man ran out of the kitchen area. He was in his early 40s, and his chef's robe were stained with oil. He looked at Zack and immediately roared, It's you again! I'm warning you, don't get too close to my little girl or I'll break your leg! Zack's face turned white and he lowered his head. Dad, what are you talking about? Zack always comes in here and supports our business. We should be thanking him if anything. How can you say that? Cherry's face turned red as she scolded the middle-aged chef. He's only here to steal you away from me, Cherry. Don't be deceived by him. Dad, Cherry said angrily, if you do this again, I'm running away. The middle-aged chef glared at Zack fiercely, and even Aiden and Jacob were disturbed by the intensity of his glare. Then he snorted and turned back to the kitchen. Cherry apologized to the three and went back into the kitchen as well to prepare the dishes.